Hello, I'm El Director, and you're watching Indie Rebel VFX, Hollywood effects without the Hollywood budget. Uh, in case you guys didn't realize, this is actually the second tutorial I got around to doing today. I'm, I'm on a roll. I don't know why, but I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to go two at once, get them both out there uh, just for the fun of it. So while the last one I did was inspired by a tutorial from Video Copilot, our video today is inspired by a uh, viewer's comment on my Sky Replacements in Atron from the Indie Rebel course. Uh, this is from Max. He says, hello, can or how can you use Natron to bring a 2D photograph to 3D with parallax like in After Effects? Is there a camera tool? So Max, this tutorial is all because of you, so thank you so much for your comment. By the way, if you guys want to uh, help the channel out a little bit and help inspire me to do more of these, let's get us growing uh, to a thousand subscribers. We're getting close. We're at 852, so we got 150 more to go. Uh, so be sure to share this video if you like it, and uh, we can keep the channel going. So here's what we're going to do. Typically, if I was going to do what I'm about to show you, I would probably use Photoshop to prepare my image, but some of you may not have Photoshop, and maybe you don't want to mess with GIMP or don't know how to learn GIMP, uh, or don't want to learn GIMP, I should say. And so we're going to do this completely inside of Natron. So the quality of this may not be the best. We're working with GoPro footage, uh, and we're doing our masking and paint out here inside of Natron, but you'll you'll get the concept and hopefully you guys will you know think it's cool. By the way, this image right here is actually me. I am a licensed skydiver. I got my A license last summer, uh, so a year ago, and I'm now working towards my my B license at the moment. So this is actually me doing a maneuver called tracking. We use it to create a lot of distance between us and other skydivers. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the still photograph that I have. You can see it's just a photo. It, there's no animation to it yet. And we're going to make it look like that my uh, buddy who is filming this is going to be like tracking up close to me. And so if we do that, there should be parallax and things. Because what a lot of people will do when they're starting out with filmmaking is they'll just add a transform effect and just scale it in and think that that does everything. In fact, let's just go ahead and set this up real quick. Uh, we'll reset this to one, and we're gonna set a keyframe here. Uh, actually, let's go to frame one, there we go. Set a keyframe for that, set a keyframe for that, and then they jump to the end of the shot, and they scale it up, reposition it a little bit, like that, and that creates a whole new set of keyframes, and then get this zoom effect, right? What's the problem with this? Why can't we do it? Well, the problem is that there's no actual parallax taking place in the shot. It looks like we're panning in on a still image. So let's see if we can stylize this a little bit and break things out into some 3D space. So let's go ahead and delete the transform node. We do not need it. We do not want it. First thing I'm going to do is add a roto node. Hit O for roto. And I'm going to come in here. Actually, you know what? We'll make this full screen so we can actually see what we're doing. And I'm going to try try being the operative word, to outline myself as cleanly as possible. So I'm going to start down here at this foot, and we're just going to do some roto. Now because this is GoPro footage, the quality of this is not the best. You can see there's all sorts of aliasing taking place in the image. But given that this is just a tutorial, we're going to do it the best we can. Now if you were doing this yourself for a short film or a paid gig, you're going to want to spend a lot of time doing this but I want us to get to the fun stuff. So let me go ahead and speed up the rest of this here. By the way, for those of you guys that uh, have never even tried a tandem skydive before, I would highly suggest it. Um, it will be an experience unlike anything that you've ever felt before and you will not be able to stop talking about it uh, for weeks and weeks and weeks afterwards. That's what happened with me. I did my first tandem in, well, my only tandem in 2017 for my birthday, and I fell in love with the culture of the drop zone and the sport in general and the feeling and the total liberation and freedom I felt while in free fall. It's actually very zen-like almost, which is not something you would expect to hear uh, when you're falling to the ground at 120 miles an hour, but for me it's very zen and uh, it makes me forget about everything, all the bad stuff going on in the world and my life and all that kind of stuff. So highly recommend doing that if you get a chance. And uh, let me know in the comments below if you uh, have ever done a solo skydive like I'm doing here or even just a tandem or if it's something that's on your bucket list. Uh, I wanna hear, especially when it's skydiving related. 
All right, just about done wrapping this up here. Again, this is not super great roto. We're not gonna win any Oscars for that part of the process, but it helps us out and helps us do what we want to do with it. So with the roto complete, uh, again, just a still frame, right? That's all we're doing here. I'm going to add a constant. There's other ways you can do this. This is just my personal favorite approach. And we add a merge, we merge the footage on top of the constant and we run the mask input into it and as we can see we now have an alpha channel of just me right there so that is step one we're going to call this skydiver so let's go ahead and put this into a backdrop and call it skydiver we'll make it fairly large so we can see shrink this back up and because skydivers are all about blue skies, we're gonna make that backdrop blue. Kind of a nice sky blue color, very cool. Oh, that's the font for that. Uh, we'll make that back to black. I get going some, so fast sometimes I forget where I need to be clicking. There we go. So that gets me a nice skydiver element that we can work with. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to remove me from the shot. Again, this would be faster and easier inside of Photoshop, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and do it here with just a roto paint node. I hit P for paint. Let's go ahead and view it, make this full screen, and bring up our clone stamp tool. Shift and drag will let me scale this up and down, like that, and command and drag will let me choose where I'm going to be starting from. So let's go and take this curvature of the earth and we'll start right here in the, the atmosphere section. And I'm just gonna bring that up like that. That looks pretty darn good, actually. I'm very impressed with how that one just turned out. And we'll do one like that. Again, command and drag, because I'm on a Mac right now, unfortunately. And then reline that back up. There. And now I'm basically gone from the image. Now, we could spend a lot more time trying to clean this up and make it look a lot better, but for our purposes right now, I'm pretty sure this is gonna be good enough. Something like that, maybe, I don't know. We all know the fields don't usually look that way, but um, yeah, close enough, good enough. Minimize the screen again. I'm using spacebar, by the way, to do that, in case you guys didn't know. I'm now gonna select my strokes that I made and I'm gonna make those set to all. Now we're all set, so now we have a clean background, right? Which we're looking at right here, and we have a foreground. So now what we can do to put this into 3D space, because that's what we really wanna do, is we're gonna add a card 3D node. So we'll start with the background first, and add a card, just like so. And I'm gonna push it back into Z space by negative 10 and scale that back up. And this is just gonna let us have it further back in space. And then we're gonna take our skydiver layer and also add a card 3D. And we'll just leave that one where it is. Now, uh, I want to go ahead and merge my skydiver on top of the background. And we can see, ta-da, we have a shot. Now this does actually give us a few problems, and here's why. If I was doing this inside a Nuke in a true 3D environment, I could actually come in and I would have a camera that I can move around that would work with whatever all my cards are and everything stays in relation to each other. We don't have that option here inside of Natron, so is there a way that we can simulate it? And actually we can using the same effect or the same technique that I showed you guys uh, in my earlier tutorial from today of linking properties together, so check this out. If I go ahead, and we'll set this to two, I'm gonna view this card, and then this card. Let's go and make this bigger. So we're only looking at this. I'm gonna drop down my camera properties for both of them, and we're going to enable the camera. And now this is the background, right? This is my first card 3D on the background, and this is the card 3D for the skydiver. I can link these camera properties to one another. So effectively, all I have to do is just change the camera for one and it will change the camera for the other one. So let's go ahead and press Command or Control if you're on Windows and we'll do Translation. 
and then we'll do rotation and we'll do scale and just in case we need it we'll do uniform scale as well so now no matter what I do if I scale this one up you can see it scales it down below as well on the second card so my camera is now linked together we'll go and put this back to one and minimize this oops one get out of there there we go and for whatever reason we're already a lot closer to the skydiver so if I just select my background one here and let's go ahead and actually put this into a another backdrop like so and we'll call this one BG for background make it I don't know 10 yeah that works good enough so just using that one I can come in and actually start moving stuff around so if I want to pan up a little bit to see where the jumper is there he is I can zoom in and out and you can see both the background and the skydiver are moving and we're getting some really cool parallax out of it so maybe I want to start from all the way back here and we'll just go ahead and set a keyframe for that set key and just in case we do some rotation we'll set a key for these as well and then we can jump forward to the last frame in the shot and we will track in a bit closer here like the skydiver is flying in close to me and then let's just go ahead and reposition it so our framing still looks good like that and uh, yeah that should be pretty good I would imagine the other thing we could do is actually add a translation on this one if we put that on here and go back to the beginning I might be able to actually let's go to the end frame because I do like that positioning there we'll set a keyframe for that if I go back here I can still move him off to the side over here so let's see what we've done now uh, let's go and make this back to one and then uh, go and fill the frame clear all that out and view the shot so you can see we're actually pushing in in 3d space to me you're getting all that cool parallax effect and uh, it all works out pretty well actually it turned out actually much better than I thought it would so so that's kind of cool uh, so yeah it is quite possible Max to do parallax effects here inside an Atron it's, it's very simple very easy to do uh, again just to recap we start off by rotoing the subject out and then we create a clean plate by painting him out and then using some card 3ds with linked camera data then everything stays in together and that just really works out nice for the final effect now we could also if we wanted to this is just getting kind of getting kind of freaky and creative uh, I can copy that paste it put that up there drop that down to say merge and we'll add another transform node and now I've got another instance of myself oh why did that not work some th oh, because that went into my mask input. That's why. Let's run that into my A2. There we go. And now I've got multiple instances. I've got a second skydiver. Just go and scale that down a little bit, like he's a little further back. Now that one isn't actually going to be flying forward. So now we should see this one fly forward to that one. And the camera still pushes in between them. So uh, yeah, as you can see, we are doing parallax effects, 2.5D, and this was just a still image to begin with. Let's not forget that. We started with just a still image captured from a GoPro, and once we've done some rotoing out, we can do some really cool things and move stuff around and all that jazz. And if we just want to clean up our comp here just a little bit, put that up like that, and uh, put that down here. Just to make things easier to keep track of and we'll line that up that way about like that and then there's our final merge down here so uh, yeah hopefully that wasn't too confusing for you guys I hope it made sense and uh, yeah so we're using again just the, the that linking is extremely powerful just in one day I mean I, I did it for the first tutorial 
and was like, hey, I can do other stuff with this too. And that's why we made this then part two uh, based upon Max's comment. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you next time right here on Indie Rebel. I'm El Director.